Stay behind. We're doing Yeshu Daf Yaimi Bahalacha. So even though we're holding now on Kuf Pei Aleph Ahmed Aleph, we're holding on the top line Sif Dalad. But I'm going to jump ahead to Sif Yud Aleph, not because we're behind, because I want to do the beginning of Sif Yud Aleph before I do Sif Dalad. Because you're going to see that Sif Yud Aleph plays directly into Sif Dalad. And since we're holding there anyway, it makes sense. Okay, so Yankel, we're, we're jumping ahead to Kuf Pei Aleph Amid Beis, Sif Yud Aleph. We're going to do the beginning of Sif Yud Aleph, and then we're going to go back to Sif Dalad, just because it, it happens to work out that way. It happens to make sense. So let's take a look at Sif Yud Aleph. The Mechaber says, Ha-shoyre chitim usa'irim v'kayoytzabahem b'mayim. Somebody who soaks kernels, grains of wheat or of barley or something similar, some other kind of grain or some other kind of seed in water. You soak seeds in water. Ha-reize toledes zayreya. This is a tolda of the malacha of zayreya. It's a tolda of planting. The chayiv b'kol And your chayiv which in the parlance of Hilcha Shabbos, Chayiv means that it's an Issa Daraisa. It's an Issa Daraisa of Zareya, and you're liable even for the smallest, most minute amount. So if you take one seed and you soak it in water, you're Chayiv for Zareya. Now, if you take a look at the Be'er Goyla in Ois Reish, he brings this from a Rambam. It's Rambam Per Ches, and uh, this, oh, easy there. This is almost a direct quote from the Rambam. Now, the question is, <coughs> exactly where does this come from? You're taking the, the strict interpretation of the malacha of zareya of planting, would be to take a seed, <coughs> put it in the ground, and cover it with earth. That's what we call planting. We generally don't call planting sticking something in water. Yes, there are hydroponics. And yes, the, it, it, there are seeds that you do soak to make them sprout in order to plant them. But strictly speaking, we think of the Malach of Zareya as putting something in dirt. So what's interesting is that if you look in the Rambam and you look at the Magid Mishnah, he sends you to a Gemara in Zvachim. The Gemara on Tzadik Daladam and Beis in Zvachim says as follows. Rava makes the following statement. He says, Zarak Sudar Lamayim, somebody who throws a garment into water, Chayev, is Chayev. Zarak Zera Pishta, uh, Zarak, <coughs> Zarak Pishtan Lamayim, if he throws, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> excuse me, if he throws flax into water, also he's Chayev. So you throw a garment into water, you chayev. You throw flax into water, you chayev. Fracti Gemara, Bishleim Suder. If you throw a garment into water, I understand why you chayev. Ovid Kibus, you're doing washing, right? Because we always say Shriyasan Zui Kibasan. When you soak it, it's akin to washing it. Ella's Ella Pishtan. But when you put, throw Pishtan into water, why is that chayev? What are you chayev for? So the Gemara says, no, not pishtan, zera pishtan, seeds of flax. Frech the Gemara, okay, zera pishtan, my timer. Why are you chayef for throwing seeds of flax into water? If you'll tell me the reason you're chayef is because it sprouts, and you're chayef is a rea, ihachi, frech the Gemara, chiti sa'arinami. So then why are you telling me pishtan? If you throw wheat or you throw barley into water, you're also chayiv. So Vazab is Rava picked on pishtan. Especially if you're talking about planting in the normal parlance of the Gemara, that's not the seed that you would pick. You wouldn't pick pishtan. So why did he pick pishtan? So the Gemara says, you know what? You're right. You're right. What's the problem with throwing pishtan, zera pishtan, into Mayim? Hanoch isluhu riri. Pishtan, when you throw pishtan into water, pishtan flax exudes either a starch or an oil of some kind. And what happens is when you throw 
a lot of pitch done into water, it thickens the water, it thickens the mixture, and you end up with a mush. And because you're, you're creating this kind of sludge, that's akin to lush. It's a told of lush. It's similar to kneading. And that's why you're chayev. Now, again, in a simple reading of this Gemara, what this Gemara seems to say is like this. Rava made a statement, throwing a cloak into, throwing a garment into water, you're chayef, throwing pishtan, into, throwing zera pishtan into water, you're chayef. The Gemara questioned why you chayef is our pishtan. The Gemara said, you'll tell me it's zera? If it's zera, I have a problem. Why do you pick pishtan? You should have spoken about wheat and barley. And for the Gemara, no, 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 no. It's not Zaireya. That's not why you're Chayev. You're Chayev for Lush. So it sounds at the end of this Gemara like you're not Chayev for Zaireya. Yet the Rambam pulls from this Gemara that you are Chayev from Zaireya. So this question was asked by a lot of different people. Apparently they didn't realize that this Shiloh was asked directly to the Rambam. Apparently, this tshuva of the Rambam, there's a tshuva of the Rambam that addresses this question. Apparently, it was not extant for a long time because a lot of Akhrainim asked this question and they didn't pick up on the tshuva of Rambam. They gave different answers. But the Rambam was asked the question directly. Somebody wrote the Rambam and said, looks to me like you goofed. That's not shot in the Gemara. So the Rambam sent back, no, you misunderstood the Gemara. What the Gemara is saying is like this. Rambam made a statement, you throw a suder, into water, Yechayev, you throw Zerapishtan into water, Yechayev, right? So the Gemara says, why Yechayev? Oh, Zireya. The Gemara says, Zireya? If you're Chayev al Zireya, you're Chayev for Chitin and Sairin also for Zireya, why is Rava joining Suder and Pishtan? What does one Isser have to do with the other? They're nothing like each other. By the Suder, you're chayef for kibbutz. By the p- zera pishtan, you're telling me you're chayef for zareya. What's the tzara shavah and What's the commonality that made Rava mention it together? Doesn't make sense. And for the Gemara, no, there is a commonality. The commonality is, I'm not talking about the iser of zareya. You're right. You're chayef for zareya also if you throw z- zera pishtan into water. But that's not the common thread. The common thread is, just like when you throw a suder into Mayim, you're chayiv right away for kibbutz, for washing, so too when you throw pishtan into Mayim, you're also chayiv right away. Now you're not chayiv as Zareya right away. Because Zareya, you're not going to be chayiv until it sprouts. Maybe you'll be chayiv lamafreya retroactively, but it, the iser does not take place right away. But there is an iser by pishtan, that does take place right away, and that's the Isser of Lush. And that wouldn't be true by Chitin and Tzairin. By Chitin and Tzairin, there would not be an Isser that would take place right away. So let me just tie it up. So from here is why the Rambam sends you to the Gemara in Zvachim to come out with this halacha, that when you soak Chitin and Tzairin, or any other seeds in water, you're Chayav Yeah? I think everybody missed the point. Okay. okay. <laughs> <clears throat> the Gemara starts with, with Pishtun. It doesn't say Zerah. It says it as a right, the Gemara changes it to Zerah Pishtun. That's number one. Number two, it compares it to... Kibbutz. To what? To, uh, to, uh, to Gvisa. Uh, right. To Gvisa. So what's the connection? So why is Gvisa Gvisa? Well, because you thought, what does it do? So okay. it, So what does it do? It takes away stain. What it do? What it... No. What it does is it softens this cloth. So therefore, the, how do you call it? The, 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 the dirt, which is attached to it, separates from that. It softens it. So when you throw the pishtan in, right. that's what it does. Yeah, but that's not the malach of kibbutz. The malach of right. kibbutz is not softening. The malach of kibbutz is not softening. The malach of kibbutz is washing. Washing, of course. But how do you wash it? If you go down I understand. To the line, I understand. But takes away the dirt. I understand what you're how saying. Does it take away the dirt because it's intertwined into the. I, I hear you. The right. And it all expands it. it. Opens, right. It but it, but if you're telling me, if you want right. to tell me. So now you have the flex. You throw it in. What happens to the flex? 
it also softens. Right. And it's easier to peel it or to do whatever. Right. It is. But that and wouldn't be kibbutz. But that wouldn't be kibbutz. It's not kibbutz, but it's but you, like but, I understand, so but you, you wouldn't be Osir, but you wouldn't be. Large. But the Osir wouldn't be, the, the Isser would not be the Malach of kibbutz. No. You, you can't create an Isser of kibbutz based on softening. Bishul is softening. I'm saying it's something the same, but because. I understand, is, but what's the Isser? This is here with dirt. But what's the Malach? What's the Malach? Which Malach is it? is that when you soften this, it's called kibbutz. When you soften this, it's called. Mefarek, or it's called whatever it's called. What? What's it called? It's You're not going to call it Bishel. Called, it's called Mefarek. It's not Mefarek. Mefarek is extruding something. It's not Mefarek. It's called uh, separation. I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 that's the problem. You've got to come up with a balacha. You've got to figure out what balacha is. Okay. I, 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 I hear. Okay. So now, that's why I wanted to I wanted to start with Yud Aleph. Now let's just do Ois Katan Nun and Nun Aleph and Nun Beis in the Mishnah before we go back to Siv Dalit. So I just caught Nun in the Mishnah Berurah, Hashoira, somebody who soaks chitin and sa'irim in water, Kedei she yisrakechu v'yatzmichu, yeah, I knew you would jump, Kedei she yisrakechu v'yatzmichu, so that it should soften and sprout, Kedei she yisrakechu v'yatzmichu, like there are certain grains like there are certain grains that you have to soak before you plant them, this is also because it's a told of Zareya, the ma zareya mechavan lots peri, just like by zareya, when you plant something, you're promoting the growth of fruit, of produce. Af came. So too over here, when you soak a seed in water, what are you doing? You're promoting growth because you're making it sprout. Mayid cotton bays. The reason the, the Mr. Brewer sends you to Mayid cotton is because it's Mayid cotton that we see that promoting growth. Even if it's only the growth of grass, it doesn't have to be the growth of produce. Anytime you promote growth is an Isra of Zerea. The cost of do I didn't share with been Maltin. If you want to soak Tua to make malt, it would be the same thing. Lishechar for beer. Chayev, do you do the Kavanase, Latzmiach? Because what you're doing is you're sprouting the barley. The cost of Eid, he also says the Chayodam, to Tekef Mishanase, Lamayim Chayev, immediately when you put the seed into the water, you Chayev. Even though it's not going to sprout until later, this happens to be a major machlokes. How is is the malacha of zayreya to be compared to bishul or not? By bishul, if you take a potato and you put it in a pot in water, and you take the pot and you put it on the stove, and you don't turn on the fire, or you turn on the fire and right away you turn off the fire, you are not over the malacha of bishul because you did not cook anything. The question is, how about by Zareya? By Zareya, you take a seed, you stick it in the ground, you cover it with earth, and then you dig it up and you take it out. Were you over on Zareya or not? This is a Machlaikis. There is a Rashash that holds that you are over on Bishel, on Zareya, because the, by Bishel, the, the mice of putting a potato in a pot with water and putting it on a stove is not the Malacha of Bishel. There's another step that you have to make. You have to cook it. Masha'en came by Zerea, the Malacha of Zerea is planting. After you plant it, God does the rest of the work. So once you did the planting, you were already over Zerea. There are those that are chalik and say, no, it's the same thing as Bishel. If you plant it and then you take it out, you aren't over on, 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 on Zerea. We'll see that it is mutter to soak grain for your animal, because then you don't want to sprout it you're just trying to soften the grain so they can eat it. They will never sprout. Because before they can sprout, the animals will eat them. Over here we're talking about seeds that don't get, um, they don't dissolve, they get mixed up in the water. Where you're talking about grains like pishton, we said, that combine with each other through the soaking. They melt down, they disintegrate. Where you get a sludge, also the shrice on the behemoth of Shem Lush. Simukin, Shar Peris, Yveshim, raisins and other dried fruit, Mutter Lishrais for Shabbos, you're allowed to soak them. When we come up with Kavashim, Osir, you're not allowed to pickle things. Okay, now let's go back to Kofpe Aleph, Aleph, Siv Dalit. 
says the Machaber, Yesh li zoher. It makes sense to be careful. Milahash lich zroim b'mokam yiridas kishamim. It makes sense to be careful. Yesh li zoher that you should not throw seeds onto a place that is wet from rain. Shesoyf on lahatzmiach. Because the end of these seeds will be that they will sprout. Now you see why I did Sifir Aleph before Sif Talat. This comes from a Hagos Mardechai that's brought down in Hagos Maimini. They looked at the Rambam. The Hagos Mardechai looked at the Rambam and said, you're not allowed to soak seeds because they're going to sprout. So if you're not allowed to soak seeds because they're going to sprout, you should be careful not to throw seeds down on the ground where there's standing water from rain because they're going to sprout. If you want to throw out uh, seeds, grains, for your chickens, and it's wet around there, only throw out the amount of seeds that the chickens will eat on that day, or maybe for two days. That way, you won't be over on anything, because you know you're going to throw them out, and you know the chickens are going to eat them up before they get a chance to sprout. If you're throwing these seeds out in a place where people walk, mutter, then there's no problem at all. Because there's definitely not a psik ratio that they're going to grow. Let's remember, the person that's throwing these grains out on the ground has no kavana that they should sprout. So we're definitely talking about a davar shein miskaven. We're talking about a, a, a malacha shein miskaven. So what would be the iser? The only iser would be if it's a psik ratio, right? But if you're throwing them out in a place where people walk, you definitely can't say it's a psik ratio that they're going to grow. If people step on them too much, they're not going to sprout. Now let's see the Mishnah Brewer. Ice cut and lamin aleph, the first line of the Mishnah Brewer. You say that you hide it right away. They don't care what's going to happen later. Yeah, so the, tr right so the truth is that this is, this is very, very complex. This machlaikis of whether you chayv right away or not, because within the machlaikis of whether you chayv right away or not, you'll see the lashon of the Mishnah Brewery is that you're chayv lamafreya. You're not chayv right now, but you're chayv lamafreya when it grows. <laughs> this is very complex. Okay, let's see. Mishnah Brewery is cut lamad aleph. You should not throw down the seeds b'makam yiridas kishamim in a place that's wet from rain. The Mishnabur is very, very careful here. He says, we're on Kuf Pei Aleph, Ahmed Aleph. You have a, a safer? Yeah. Kuf Pei Aleph, Ahmed Aleph, the first line of the Mishnabur. He's cutting Lamed Aleph. Ritzoy no loimar, says the Chavetz Chaim, the kavan of the Mishnabur, of the Mechaber here, when he says, don't throw down the seeds in a place that's wet from rainwater. Ritzoy no loimar, shamokar mahu lach mipnei agishamim sham. It's a wet spot that stays wet. When you throw the seeds down, it is wet. Don't think that the Mechari means that right now it's dry, and you're going to throw the grain down when it's dry, but then later it's going to get wet. Says the Chavetz Chaim, that's not a problem at all. There's no iser in that, and this comes from a Nishma Sodom. There's no iser in that, because you didn't do a malacha. You threw down grain, you threw down seeds on a dry spot. You shouldn't throw down seeds in other wet places. Islam and Beis, what's the problem here? Because in the end, they are going to sprout. Now, again, this is a malacha, it's, this is a davar she'enim eskaven. You're throwing down the grain, you're throwing down the seeds, there's no way you have kavanah that it should sprout. You're only chayiv, the only makam over here to say that there's an iser is if it's a psik ratio. And that's why the Mechaber's words were Shesoyfan Latzmiach, because they're going to sprout. Says the Mishnah a Pirish, Sheyitzbachu Machmas Harikuch, they're going to soften and they're going to sprout. Kederach Kal Tvua Kishanais Demai Sabamayim, like any grain that you put in water. U Kamon Sif Yod Aleph, like we saw in Sif Yod Aleph. Now, that's the first two lines of the Mishnah Brewery here, that the Isser is because the seeds are going to sprout, that comes from a Chayodam. Now the Mishnah Brewery continues, Oy Efsher, or it's possible, Tibizman Meruba, 
that in a longer period of time, yishtoresh pakarka, the seeds will not only sprout, they will actually take root in the ground. Over here, the Chavetz Chaim is walking a tightrope between a Chayodam and a Taisir Shabbos. The Chayodam holds the Yisr of throwing the seeds into water is because the seeds themselves will sprout. So you're promoting the growth, the sprouting of the seed. That is enough for you to be Chayv Zareya. The Taisir Shabbos says that's not enough to be Chayv Zareya. To be Chayv Zareya, it has to take root in the ground. So says the Chavetz Chaim, there's two possibilities over here. We're not sure which one. Is it the seed sprouting or rooting in the ground? Ice cotton lamb and gimel said the Mechaber that if you're throwing out seeds or grains for your chicken, only throw out the amount that will be eaten in a day, either that day or two days. Vasep is a day or two days, says the Chavetz Chaim. The Bizman Mu'at Kazer, because in a short period of time like this, one day or two days, La Yitzbechu, the grain will not have a chance to sprout. The Chol Shekein, the La Yishrashu Bakarka. And certainly, according to the Taisa Shabbos, that you need rooting in the ground, it's certainly not going to root in the ground that quickly. Ma'ashein Kein, L'Shloy Shayam, and V'Yoyser. But if you're waiting three days or more, Yitzbechu Azroyim, V'Yizchayv, L'Mafreya, Mishum Zareya. Then they will sprout, and you will be over on Zareya. Gam L'Chad Deya, B'Yeridea, Simen Reich, Sada Gimel, because we do have one opinion in Yeridea, this is by the Isser of Yoshan Chadosh, Isser of Chadosh. Kol Shir Ashrosha, Einel Shloisha Yamim. You have a true Hadeshin over there that says that it only takes three days for something to root in the ground. Ein Bepiskei Chuva over there, who brings down many sheetas that agree with that true Hadeshin. Now, another point, says the Chavetz Chaim, the Da, when we say over here that you should throw out seeds for your chicken, what they're going to eat in a day or two days. Now, wait a second. Right away, there's a potential problem. How could you throw out chicken feed for your chicken for two days? You're not allowed to feed your, you're not allowed to throw out grain for your chicken on Shabbos for Sunday. That's Achona. So says the Mishnah Brura, the Da, the Mairi, the Hishlachas, Azraim, the Pamachas. We're talking about where he threw the, all the grain down in one shot. If you throw it in one shot, you're not m'chuyiv to weigh how much grain are you throwing. You're not m'chuyiv to count your grains and know exactly how much your chickens are going to eat. You could take a handful, an armful, whatever it is, and, and throw it out in one shot. But if you would be doing it in multiple shots, then you have a problem. You can't, you can't be mechid. Otherwise, there would be a problem of hachana. Now, I want to point out one thing over here, and that is that the Hagos Mordechai, when you look in the source of this halach in Sif Dalet, it's very interesting. The way the Hagos Mordechai actually wrote this halacha, he wrote, you're not allowed to soak chit in a on Shabbos because it's a told of Zareah. Lefikach, therefore, yizoher adam. A person should be careful not to throw seeds in a place that's wet from Yeridas Kishamim. It's very clear from the Agos Mardachai that the Agos Mardachai held that this is an Iser. So this is the Raisi, not allowed to do it. Yezoyer Adam. When the Mechaber wrote it, the Mechaber added a key word. The Mechaber added the word Yesh. Yesh Lizoyer. It, it, yesh Lizoyer. It makes sense to be careful. It seems to me, from looking through the Achreinim here, that the Mechaber, as much as he wrote this halacha, he was not ready to jump on the bandwagon of the Agos Mardachai and sign on to this, that this is a psik reisha? It's a psik reisha? That if you throw a seed into a place that's wet from Gishamim, and it's going to take a day or two to sprout, it's definitely going to sprout. What happens if somebody steps on it? Well, what happens if, if an animal eats it? What happens? So I think, this is me talking, I get the feeling that the Mechaber wanted to bring down the Halacha, but he wasn't ready to sign on quite as stark as the Agos Mardachai, and therefore he added this word, Yesh. Zok the Mechaber Vaiter, Ois, the Sif Kotten Hei. Yeah. Right. He says that's only if you have kavana. So 
to. Well, yeah, we 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 uh, did we miss? Yeah, we we're going to see that later, Kavana. We're going to talk about Kavana. Yeah, we, I don't have the dishu here. We're going to talk about Kavana. And, and also over here, why is why is the Mechaber say yes? Yeah. I think because it's clear that he doesn't want him to. He, he's not doing for growing. He's saying. He's You're right. That he makes it a Darvish Adam Miskavan. What? You're right. That that's what makes it a Darvish Adam Miskavan. So but if it's a but if it's a psikresha, it would be us anyway. I think his problem is that how do you call this a psikresha? How do you call this a psikresha? Right. It's a lechur. It's not a psikresha. But the Agos Mardukai obviously held it was a psikresha. Right. Right. But apparently the Agos Mardukai held it is a psikresha. The Agos Mardukai held it a psikresha. All right. Somebody can take him out. Right. Pull him out. Sivkot Nehei. Asavim Sha'olo al oizen hakli milachas hakli. The mildew, or the mold, that grows on the handle of a keli that's wet. The Mishnah gives the example of a bucket that's always by the well, and you're always dipping it in and taking it out, dipping it in, taking it out, so it's always wet, and you get mold, or mildew, growing on the handle. That is considered, it's as if it's mechuber, and there's an iser daraisa to take, to remove that mold from the handle. Because that is being oiker davar migiduloi. Well, you, that's a direct tilde of kaitzer. You're take, you're removing a growing thing from the place that it grows. So it's also, says the Mishnah Ice cut in Lamadal and Milachas Akli. This is a mildew that grows from the dampness of the Kali. Kamaisha Matsu Yibudli, like you would find on a bucket. Sheshaya bin Bai Tamid, that you use constantly to draw water. Shegedelin Bai Kimin Patriois, that you have something that is akin to mushrooms. It's a fungus. It's doesn't, it doesn't grow from the ground, it grows from the air and from moisture. So you have that growing on the handle. Ice cut in Lamad Hey Chayev. Yerchayev, why? Misham oiker davar migiduloi, because of the iser of uprooting something from its place of growth, to who teledes kaitzer, which is a tilda of the malach of, of kaitzer of harvesting. Now, he makes a critical chilek over here, the Mishnah Baruch. V'loi dami lo'atzit she'enai nakuv, da'at teilish vimenu potter. We're going to see, if somebody grows something in a flower pot that does not have a hole, so no hole in the flower pot on the bottom. So there's no unica. Whatever's growing in the flower pot does not draw any nourishment from the ground. It's not considered mechobalakaka. It's only the earth that's in the pot. And over there we say that if you rip something out of an otzah chain and nakuv, there is no isadaraisa of Tailish. There's an isadarabonon as exera, but there's no isadaraisa. That's not called Tailish. Because Tailish is only removing something that's attached to karka oilam. That's attached to the earth. In a flower pot, that's not attached to the earth. So now, the Mishnah wants to know, what exactly is the chilek? You're telling me if I remove mold from the handle of a bucket, I'm over because of Aikadav and If you remove a flower that's growing in a flower pot, I'm not over on Aikadav and So he explains, what's the chilek? Misham, de'enam a chubal karka oilam, deshani hasam, it's, it's different by not such a nakuv. The ain derech zriya sham. It's not the derech. It's not normal to plant crops in an not such a nakuv. Masha ain hacha the iker gidulon kain. Masha ain over here. This is where mildew grows. Mildew grows on damp surfaces. So, I the the way the Arach Hashulchan. I love the way the Arach Hashulchan explains this. The Arach Hashulchan says like this. He says, when you plant something in an otzitz she'enay nakav, planting in a flower pot is something that's done by man. It, it's done behishtad lusay shel adam. Man takes a flower pot, fills it with earth, and plants something in a flower pot. And it's, since it's not the derech to do that in an otzitz she'enay nakav, you cannot call it mokam gidulay. It doesn't grow there naturally. It only grows there usually by the intercession of man. Man goes ahead and does something, and that's not the derech. So A, it's done by man, and B, it's not the derech. So you can't call it mokum giduloi. You can't 
call that Oiker Davar Migidulai. Mashe can mildew. Mildew, yeah, that's the primary place of growth for mildew. Mildew grows on wet surfaces. So you're not allowed to put your nose on Shabbos. That's not a growth. Of course it is. No, it's, it's not. It's just like the mildew. It's mucus. It's, in it's mucus. It doesn't grow. It's not a growing thing. It's not a growing thing. It's not. It's not. It's not, it's not a growing thing. It's attached to your nose. It's not a growing thing. It's not attached. It's a secretion. It's a secretion. It doesn't derive nourishment from anywhere. It's a secretion. It gets caught up in the hair in your nose, but it's not. I think there is somebody who tried to who tried to say it's mafaric. <laughs> okay. The um, huadin. <clears throat> I don't know if somebody can help me out here. I don't know the physical facts over here. The Mishnah Bura says the huadin. The same thing would apply. How toilish kishus may hizmi vhigi. Kishus is hops. Um, so the Mishnah Bura says, and this is not his. He brings this from a Gemara in Shabbos. The Gemara in Shabbos says that, that removing hops from his and higi are bramble bushes, thorn bushes. Um, even though the hops are also not attached to the ground. Still What I don't understand over here is when, when you pick an apple from a tree, the iser over there is not oiker dove migiduloi. The iser is kaitzer. It's a title of kaitzer. Even though the apple is not attached to the ground, the apple is attached to the tree. I don't know why hops are different. From what I understand of hops, hops are attached to the bush. So pulling it off the bush, I don't know why we have to compare that to a fungus. A fungus is not yoinik from the karka. Hops, to me, is like any other flower. It's yoinik from the tree, which is yoinik from the ground. I just, it, sounds, it feels to me like there's a metzias here that I'm missing. I don't know. Okay, let's go back there. Sif Vav. I don't want to fall more behind. Sif Vav. Asavim shetechavan ba'afar mi ba'ayd yayim k'day she'yiu lachim. If you have plants that you stuck into earth on Friday afternoon, you didn't do this on Shabbos, you stuck it into earth before Shabbos, k'day she'yiu lachim, so that they should remain moist, muter l'achayz ba'olim u'lahitziyan. You're allowed to grab hold of them by the part that is above the ground, and you're allowed to pull them out on Shabbos. Now, let's stop here for a second. Well, let's read the next three words. V'hu shaloi hishrishu. This is true as long as they didn't take root. And they certainly didn't take root. If you stuck them into the ground, so you had, let's say, uh, fresh cut flowers, and you stuck them into earth on Erev Shabbos, it takes time for them to take root. So it didn't take root yet. Since it didn't take root, what are you over by removing it from the ground? You're not over toilish. You're not over oiker davim gidulai. It didn't grow here. It's not rooted. So there's no iser of toilish. Now, the Mishnah Brewer is going to tell you that there's another iser that we don't have to worry about. Let's take a look at ois lamid vav. Ois lamid vav. Oh, very good. Ois lamid vav, the Mishnah Brewer says... Why did you stick this in the ground? So it should be moist. Like plants that are pretty to look at. Or they have a pleasant smell. You fill up a jug with earth. Moist earth. You stick it in. Says the Mishnah Bura. The same thing would be if you didn't stick it into a, into a flower pot. You stuck it into the ground itself before Shabbos. As long as you didn't have in mind, and this is really out of place because you didn't discuss this yet, as long as you didn't have in mind when you stuck it into the ground that you want to plant it, we're going to see if when you stuck it into the ground you had in mind that you wanted to plant it, then you're not allowed to take it out of the ground on Shabbos even if it did not yet take root. Yeah. Right. So that's why we're not worried here, because you don't have enough time. But, but if you had in mind, if your intent, when you stuck it in, let's say, after, uh, after Sukkot, you took your Aravis, and you stuck your Aravis in the ground because you wanted to plant the Aravis. It takes time for it to root. So if you did it Friday afternoon, Shabbos day, it didn't take root yet. Right? But since you had intent to plant it when you stuck it in, we're going to see you're not allowed to pull it out because of Xerah. Since you intended 
to, for it to take root, you might get mixed up and you might come to, to uproot something that already did take root. But over here, says the Mishnah you don't have a problem. You didn't intend for it to take root and it didn't take root, so there's no problem here of, of toilish. So it doesn't matter if you stuck it in a flower pot or you stuck it in the ground itself. Islam and Zion, the Mechaber said you could, you could grab the leaves that are above the ground and you could uproot it. Let's say you want to pull it out of the earth, you want to sniff it, then you want to put it back. Says the Mishnah There was a Havamina in the Gemara that in order for this to be mutter, what you have to do is you have to take the plant on Friday, stick it in the ground, pull it out, stick it in the ground, pull it out, stick it in the ground, pull it out, numerous times until you make a nice wide hole. Why do you have to do that? That way on Shabbos, when you pull it out, you won't move any dirt. Says the Mishnah Brewer, the Mechaber is telling you here, you don't have to do that. You could stick it into the ground in Arab Shabbos, and on Shabbos you could pull it out. Why? Because even if you'll move the dirt, says the Mishnah Brewer, let's learn about it. We don't worry about it. You're not moving the dirt with your hand. You're only moving the dirt by uh, proxy of the plant. And this is Tiltal Menatzad. Tiltal Menatzad, we learned by Mutzah, is Mutter if you're not doing it with of the thing that's moving. So you don't want to move the dirt. You're worried about the plant. You're not worried about the dirt. So this is Tiltal Menatzad, it's Mutter. That to do this inside the house in an earthen floor would be a problem of mashvegumis. So over there it would be also. You want to add something? We did discuss this. You have a radish or something like that. Yes. Yeah, shinilches. It's similar. It's very similar. Says the said the Mishnah Berurah, Ulai said the Mechaber, Ulai Tzion, you're allowed to take them out on Chavis. Ois Kant Lamed Ches, Vehu Adin Lachziron Achakak Lim Kaimon. Not only can you pull these out on Chavis, you could even put them back on Chavis. Why not? What's the problem? You're not planting. You're not Mechaven. Your intent is not to plant it, and it's not a psik reisha that it's going to take root. Because you put it in, the next guy is going to come and take it out. And also, who says he's going to leave it there? So it would only be us if there was a psikresha. There's no psikresha. But the Mechaber, the Mishnah Berurah says, Im nista manekev You could only put them back in if after you took it out, the hole didn't close up. If the hole closed up, you can't stick it back in because that, it seems to me, from Shin Ches and from the Me'iri that this is brought down from, that this is Mechzi Ka'isaguma. It looks like you're digging a hole. And digging a hole would be a problem with Bainam. What's the tail sticking it in if there's no earth touching it? To keep it moist. No, there is earth touching it. There is earth touching it. There's a hole. There's still a hole. There's still a hole. It's not, it didn't close up. You stick it in now, and it has all the moist earth around it. And it's touching on the bottom. Even if you even if you stick it a little bit further into the ground, I think there, it's still not a merci kaisaguma, because the, on on the surface there's a hole. Right. We'll get the flowers and water. Okay. Um, the mechaber said a little bit weiter. He said vehushaloi hishrishu. The gam tzar sheina writes about shrashasan. He has to be that he had no kavana for it to root. Avalim niskaven lizria oser. If he had kavana for planting when he stuck these in on Erev Shabbos, then he cannot pull them out. Says the Mishnah Berurah, "I cut lamet tesvu shalay shrishu kigoyim kaidim shalay shiyomim." As long as you did this three days in advance, does mavadik lay shrishu within three days? It's not going to take root. Damn shrishu! If they did take root, pshita shalay tziyam. You certainly would not allow to be not be allowed to pull them out on Shabbos. Shareik oikar davim gedulai. That would zicha be an iser. Aval im says the Chaber said if you had intent to plant it, then you're not allowed to pull them out on Chavez even if they did not take root. Explains the Mishnah Brura. Aval im if they if you had intent for it to take root, the kevin shem tchufin 
utmunin bakaka, because since they're stuck in and they're covered by the ground, kishar zroim, just like any other plants, vegam miskavin luzaram, and when you stuck them in, you had kavonet to plant them, gazru burabanan, so over there, the kakam men exera, to loilesi lachlufe, lisleish lacharash rasha, that you shouldn't make a mistake and say the same way I'm allowed to pull these out, I'm allowed to pull something else out. Okay, says the Mechaber in Sif, in Sif Zion. Aser litloish afilu me'otzitz she'enay nokov. You're not allowed to uproot a plant, even from a flower pot that does not have a hole in it. Says the Bishtabura is cut in Aleph. Aser litloish. This is an Isid Rabbanon. It's not an Isid Daraisa, because this plant is not Mechubal Akaka. It's not connected to the ground. So it's only an Isid Rabbanon. Aser litloish. Says the Chavetz Chaim, You're also not allowed to water a plant that's in, an, uh, in a flower pot, even if it doesn't have a hole. Even if the flower pot is located on the 18th story of an apartment building, very, very, very far from the ground, and it doesn't even have a hole, you're still not allowed to water it. This is Rabbana. We're talking about a flower pot that does not have a hole. But if you're talking about a flower pot that does have a hole, over there there would be an Isidaraisa. Because through the hole in the flower pot, we say that the plant is going to draw nourishment from the ground. Because it draws from the moistness of the karka, of the earth, through that hole. Even if it's a tiny hole, even if it's a tiny, tiny little hole that only a tiny root could come out, even if the hole is on the side of the pot, it's still usher. Since the hole is opposite a part of the plant, a part of the stem of the plant that's in the dirt. Certainly, if it's on the bottom. Let's see if we can go a drop right there. The Machabra says in Sivches, Otsits, Perish Chatsi Kad Shazarim Shamasavim, a flower pot that you plant plants in. I feel ain't a nokov, even if it does not have a hole. Yesh Lizarim and Litlai me al Gabi Karka, Ulahanicha al Gabi Yesedais, O Yipcha, Ben Shu shall eat Spen shall Cheris. What the Machabra is talking about over here, according to the Bir Alacha, is as follows. You have a flower pot, even if it's a flower pot, if it's made out of either wood or out of earthenware, not if it's made out of metal, not if it's made out of anything else, if it's made out of wood or it's made out of earthenware, you're not allowed to take that flower pot, pick it up, right now it's exposed to the ground, right? You're not allowed to pick it up and hang it on a peg or put it up higher on something else, even if there's nothing separating between it and the pot. Why? Because there's a machloikis. There's one cheetah that says that an earthenware flower pot that doesn't have a hole is the same as a flower pot that does have a hole, but a wooden one is not. Then there's a cheetah that holds the opposite. A wooden one is like an otzitz nakuv, but an earthenware one is not. Says the Mechaber, we have to be machmer like both shitas. Now, if you would take an otzitz nukuv, if you would take a flower pot that has a hole, lift it up and put it up higher, you are now limiting the amount of nourishment that it could draw from the ground. When it's closer to the ground, it draws more nourishment. When it's further, it draws less, less nourishment. So that is ke'en kaitzer. It's You're cutting it off somewhat from the karka. Therefore, says the Mechaber, if you're talking about an otzit she'enay nakuv, if it's made out of wood or of cheres, you also have the same potential problem. Okay, so tomorrow we'll pick up on Kuf